If this a game, 2K, one of a kind. 2K, best by my thigh. 2K, friends I don't fly. Ooh, a monkey barrage. Uchi hot test on my highs. Alright, what's going on, bros? I think I'm Hercules here. What we going to do is, uh, today, Naruto Arena had an update. We're going to look through the update, see what kind of characters they added, any reworks, any nerfs. We're going to look at the reworks and nerfs on a different video. This video is for the new curtains that release. So, as you can see, for the new character in the Box of Bliss, we have Shino, Shippuden version. Uh, we have reworks for uh, uh, Sage Naruto. New character, Timujin. We also got uh, Yutakata, Yu Ido Tensei Fu. Uh, QB Naruto, and we also have Eternal Mangekyo Sasuke. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to look at some of these abilities, and then I'll probably give you guys some advice on, from the beginning, in my opinion, on how to combat these, just from looking at the skills. Because as he just released today, I don't have any of them yet. So first character we're going to look at is Shino Shippuden. Shinho is a medical ninja from the land of sky and the sensei of Amaru. He can use the body revival technique to achieve an up, uh, almost indestructible body as well as use his dark chakra to cause great harm to his enemies. Skill, body revival. Shino removes all harmful skills from himself and then heals himself with 20 health. For one turn, this skill will be replaced by a perfect regeneration. During this time, revival fist and super revival will deal 10 additional damage and will heal 10 less health. Cool down none, energy required none, uh, random, Classes strategic and instant. Revival Fist. Shino deals 15 affliction damage to one enemy and heals himself for 15 health. Cooldown, none. Energy random. All his energies are random. I'm not gonna go through that over and over. Skill, Super Revival Fist. Shino deals 25 affliction damage to one enemy and heals himself for 25 health. He does a lot of hitting you and healing. That's cool. That's a new skill. I've never seen this before. Skill, Zero Tails Takeover. For three turns, Shino will ignore all non damage all non damage harmful effects and this will be replaced by zero tail shadow armor during this time shinho will be invulnerable to friendly skills and by the revival revival fist and super revival fist cannot be used now let's talk about uh perfect regeneration which is a two-parter of the body revival shinho heals himself at 35 health for one turn revival fist and super revival fist will heal 10 additional health and will do 10 less damage skill Zero Tail Shadow Arms. Shin Ho targets one enemy destroying any destructible defense they have and then dealing 30 damage to him. And that is Shin Ho in a nutshell. I like him. I like him. He's a random. He's actually one of the best randoms I've seen. Just looking at him on paper. I think the best way to get someone like Shin Ho is to stun him. Stun him. Any type of stun character that can stun affliction skills and physical I do you well, and especially if you can just stun his turrets. It's a bun. If you just stun him, point blank period, you should win the match. I really can't see. Uh, that's the easiest counter I'm thinking of. And with that being said, let's look at. Well, we're gonna look at the Naruto because he was a rework rather than, you know, a, a, a nerf or a buff. So, uh, Frog Kata Kick, let's see if it does the same thing. Seeing the Naruto deals 25 damage to one enemy and stuns their physical and energy skills for one turn. For the rest of the game, seeing the Naruto skills will deal 5 less damage. This affects stats. This skill becomes recoil when used. Huh? Why would Naruto deal less damage all throughout? Okay, moving on. Um, That's the rework, guys. Naruto skills would deal five less damage and it stacks that hopefully the rest of his move because he was never someone I thought that was super powerful. Um summoning for him to be a sage. What do you, what do you guys think about this? Let me know uh down in the uh, comments, guys. Do you think this Naruto rework even sounds good? Just from the first ability. Let's go through the rest of these. Summoning three sage toads, sending Naruto targets all enemies for one turn, reducing their damage by 100 percent for two turns, Rise and Shuriken will cause one blue and one random energy instead. For the rest of the game, Sin and Naruto skills will deal 10 less damage. This skill stacks and is invisible on the first turn. We replace by receiving a barrage for two turns after use. So now we have a second move that makes Naruto weaker as the game progresses. Making Rise and Shuriken. 
Sinner Naruto deals 55 piercing damage to one enemy. For the rest of the game, Sinner Naruto's skills will deal 10 less damage. This skill stacks and cannot be counted or reflected. So if you're looking at it like this, guy, oh, hold on, let me... Sinner Naruto heals himself for 15 health and an additional 5 health for each skill he has used on the game. After the skill is used, Sinner Naruto remove all healing increase and damage decrease stacks from his skills. Ah! Whew! I was like, what is going on? Okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that a whole lot. Okay. I'm going to explain to you guys what's going on here at the end. Skill recoil. You send a Naruto deals 30 piercing damage to one enemy affected by the fraud kind of kick. For the rest of the game, send a Naruto skills will deal far less damage. This skill stacks. Rasengan Mirage. It's been that Rasengan Mirage used to be a, a blue and a random, if I'm not mistaken, or two blues. Now it's just a random. For one turn, the first enemy skill used on send a Naruto will be counted and the enemy will take 25 damage. This skill is not decreased by sending Naruto skills. For the rest of the game, Naruto skills will deal far less damage. This deal stacks and is invisible. So the way I'm getting this, I would probably come in off the rip doing summoning Sage Toads, right? After that, I'm probably trying to get the Rising Shuriken off. Bing. I do the Frog Kata Kick. Bing. And after that, I uh, Sage Revitalization. Right? I don't know. You, the, the point of being, guys, you can't do too many moves without getting that Sage Revitalization off now. All right. Let's look at the next character. I don't want to spend too much time on these people. We're going to look at T. Mugen. Okay. So, Temujin is a young man from an unknown continent. Born as the heir of the main branch of his clan, Temujin has the ability to create and seal away the stole of Galil. Temujin is extremely loyal to Hato. Wishing to be of use of him, Temujin trained hard to become a powerful fighter. Oh, that's so nice, Temujin. Okay, um, skill Rage and Thunder. Temujin targets one enemy the following turn. That enemy will take 20 infliction damage for one turn. Their strategic skills will last one turn less. Permanent strategic skills will, la will instead last nine turns less. This skill is invisible. This skill becomes Rage and Thunder Blast for one turn at the main use. I'm confused. If a skill lasts permanently, why would making it last nine turns less do anything? I'm confused. Oh, maybe... I'm, I'm gonna look at that mechanic. I have to unlock her and understand or, uh, him and uh, understand that mechanic. Um, skill, Rage and Thunder Threat. Temujin targets one enemy, and for one turn during this time, if they use a new skill, they will take 30 affliction damage. For one turn, this enemy's physical skills will last one turn less. Permanent physical skills will instead last nine turns. Oh my goodness, wow. These are some new skills. They really dipping into something new. Retractable Shield. For one turn, Temujin will counter all physical skills used on him. The counter... Uh, the counter enemy's physical skills will permanently deal five less damage. This uh, affects stacks. This skill is invisible. Wow. You know, you got the sword parry. It's a regular and vulnerable, guys. Nice. And last but not least, um, he has a fifth skill. A raging blast. Uh, a raging thunder blast. Tribution deals 20 affliction damage to the enemy affected by raging thunder. For one turn, any enemy that uses a new skill in Tribution will take 15 affliction damage. This skill is invisible. I like him. I like him. He's a lot of invisible. Trying to be a Temujin. I'm like encounters on him. I'm like encounters on him. Counters and stuns. Simple enough. All right. Next up, we want to look at Edo Tensei. You can talk about. All right, guys. Here we go. Edo Tensei Yu Takata. Um. Let's go through our skills. I'm not going to read his description. He's not like no one new new. Ido Tensei Yutakata deals 15 piercing damage to one enemy who will then take 5 piercing damage for the following 3 turns. During this time, every time this enemy uses a new skill, they will be unable to reduce damage or become invulnerable for one turn. This skill cannot be used on the enemy already affected by it. Leech Gap Ido Tensei Yutakata targets one enemy stealing 15 health from them each for 2 turns. During this time, speed dodge will last two turns instead of uh, two turns instead of use. For one turn, the target of this enemy will be unable to reduce damage or become invulnerable. God, they have some complicated wordings with these skills. Saikan Awakening. Ido Tensei Yutakata makes one enemy unable to reduce damage or become invulnerable for four turns. Ido Tensei Yutakata team will become invulnerable for one turn and will gain 15 points of destructible defense for four turns. This skill becomes Wisdom Wolf of Decay when used. You got a regular block. Wisdom Wolf Decay. There was 20 affliction damage to all enemies. This skill ignores invulnerability. Nice. I like him. 
wasting a lot of time guys we're just gonna go through these abilities and then we'll make a video on how to count it on bug bite you don't tend to see food there's 25 damage to one enemy for one turn if they use a new skill the cooldown of that skill will be increased by one turn I like it skill powder Edo Tensei Food deals 15 piercing damage to all enemies for one turn. They use a new skill to cool down. This skill will be increased by two turns. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Shimoi Awakening. Edo Tensei Food targets herself and her allies back them 15 points of destructible defense and 10 points of destructible defense for four turns. During this time, Edo Tensei Food allies will have the cooldown of their strategic skill reduced by one for one turn. This skill becomes Majestic Stream for four turns after use. Majestic Sting. Edo Tensei Food deals 25 piercing damage to one enemy. For one turn, if they use a new skill, the cooldown of that skill will be increased by 3 for 2 turns. If they don't use a skill, they will take 15 piercing damage. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, a lot of destructible defense built up. Let's get to what we was waiting for. Oh, man. Sage QB Naruto. During his fight with against Tobi, Naruto got to combine his Senen and Karama Chakra Float modes in order to strengthen his abilities. Capable of creating a yellow protection of Karama's body, Naruto becomes one of the fastest shinobi alive while in this mode. Karama Chakra Flow Senen QB Naruto heals himself for 10 health and increases the damage of his skills by 10 for the rest of the game. This effect stacks. For one turn, Senen QB Naruto will be unable to be killed. Ooh, I love it! Karama Energy Link. Sending QB Naruto targets one ally. For the rest of the game during this time, they will be healed for 5 health each turn. And whenever they use a new skill, they will be healed for an additional 15 health. This skill becomes Chakra Transfer for 2 turns when used. This skill ends as QB Naruto dies and cannot be removed. This skill stacks. Yes, I'm getting him. He's the first one I'm going after. Skill Tail Beast Charge. Sending QB Naruto deals 25 damage to one enemy and 5 damage to all others. For one turn, the first enemy that uses a new skill on QB Naruto will take 10 damage. This skill becomes Tail Beast Bomb Blast for two turns after use. Full QB Karama, a uh, full body Karama Awakening. For one turn, Sin and QB Naruto will be unable to be killed. For the rest of the game, every time Sin and QB Naruto uses a new skill, he will gain five points of permanent destructible defense. This skill becomes Tail Chakra Arms permanently after being used. Chakra transfer. This is what happens after you do Karama energy link. Sending QB Naruto targets one ally granting them one blue energy and for one turn if they use a new skill, the cooldown of that skill will be reduced for two to two. Wow. Tail Beast Bomb Blast. Sending QB Naruto targets one enemy removing all helpful skills from a damn there and 35 damage. This skill cannot be counted or reflected. I love it. I love it. I love it. Tail Beast uh, Chakra Arms. Sending QB Naruto deals 10 piercing damage to all enemies for one turn. If they use a new skill, the cooldown of that skill will be increased by one. Hmm. I like him a lot. Let's look at the final one we was all waiting for. Edo Mangekyo Sasuke. To avoid complete binding, Sasuke decided to take Tobi's advice and steal Itachi's eyes so he could achieve the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. With Sharingan's final form, Sasuke can use his powers repeatedly without exhausting himself. <coughs> Skill, Armistu Sano Activation. For six turns, Eternal Mangekyo Sasuke gains five points of unpierceable damage reduction. During this time, he will also gain ten points of that destructible defense permanent. Each turn, it will ignore all harmful non-damage effects. This skill becomes Eternal Mangekyo Insight for six turns after use. This skill cannot be removed. Summoning, Ayota. Eternal Mangekyo Sasuke deals 15 damage, piercing damage to one enemy and gains one rare energy. For one turn, that enemy skills will last two additional, or oh, this enemy skills will cause two additional random energies. This skill deals 10 additional damage to each with each use. During Armor Susano activation, this skill becomes Blaze Release Susano Kakasuchi. <sighs> wow. These fucking skills are a mouthful, guys. Infernal Style Flame Control. Eternal Mangekyo Skasuke deals 5 affliction damage to one enemy after each use. This skill will deal 15 affliction damage and will cause one additional random energy for the rest of the game. This skill can only be used up to 4 times. Area Control. This skill makes Eternal Mangekyo invulnerable for one turn. During Armor Susano activation, this skill also ignores all enemy damage for one turn. So, like, in case you got on, can't reduce damage or become invulnerable on me. 
Skill, internal Mangekyo insight. For the following turn, the first enemy used a skill on it. Internal Mangekyo Skansky will add a skill stunt for one turn. This skill is invisible when it becomes Blaze release at Satsa Mangata. <laughs> for one turn, when you, yeah, we, I'm, 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 we keep it. Blaze release, Yasaka Magatama. Internal Mangekyo Sansuke deals 100 inflicting damage to one enemy. This skill cannot be counted on reflection. Come on, you stun, you kill, you pow, let's get it. Blaze release Susano Takasuchi. And turning Mangekyo Skaki deals 30 piercing damage to one enemy for two turns. If their enemy does not use a new skill, they'll be dealt 10 affliction damage that cannot be ignored. Ah, oh, damn. Wow. These characters are OP. So now, guys, we're going to do a quick look through and just see how you unlock these characters. So to unlock uh, Sin and Naruto, you have to be a Jin Cherokee and win seven battles in a row with Sin and Naruto or QB Naruto and then win the battles with. Sending Naruto or Kibi Naruto. That's actually pretty easy. To unlock Eternal Mangekyo Sasuke, you have to win seven battles in a row with Mangekyo Sasuke or Akatsuki Sasuke, and also win 50 battles with Sasuke. To uh, unlock Temujin, all you gotta do is win six battles in a row with any Konoha 11. Wow. To earn Ido Tensei Yu Takata, you have to win six battles in a row with Yukataka, while also winning 30 battles in a row with Yukataka. Not in a row, but just 30 battles, guys. Sorry. To unlock Ido Tensei Fu, you have to win six battles in a row with Fu, while also winning 30 battles with Fu. These characters are easy to get, guys. Enough of this. Stop watching the video. Go out there and get them. Um, I'll be releasing a video on how to uh, best them. I'm going to actually have to... I want to battle them some first, guys, rather than just spurting out. Oh, just do this, do that, you know. Let me actually battle them, guys. Gain some expertise, and I'll be right back. I think I'm Hercules. Oh! And make sure you guys like, subscribe, share it to your friends, share it to your friends' friends. Who knows? Probably get some people on this game. Boom, and they can make a tech and resurgence like it's doing. You see them recent characters. Also, guys, if you um having a hard time unlocking characters, you can go uh donate to the Patreon benefits. And one of the benefits of being a Patreon is unlocking characters that are very difficult for you without uh, doing a mission. So go ahead, guys, do that. I personally don't do that. I I I need that challenge. That's kind of what gets me there for this game. I need that. So, but um, that's all I got, guys. And last thing, who do you think is better out of all the new batch of characters? I want to go ahead and put my cast in and say it in the next video. Do it! I'm glad you were here today. Talk out my fear to my nato arachnids. Bounce like shit. I'm strapped with plasmids. Mega bust up when I'm snapping like a spazzing square. What happened? I'm on a tear when I spit. I be everywhere like I'm Book of the Whip. 